What an absolute joy February has been. Squashing bugs, spilling oil and smashing circuitry all while spreading democracy across the galaxy with a slew of high-tech weaponry alongside an absolutely fantastic community of dedicated and passionate players. I absolutely love this game and I think I speak for a lot of people when I say it's come at a time when it's felt like we've been getting let down more and more by AAA studios. I've personally been losing hope and this game has completely reignited that fire. So before I go into this video, to everyone at Arrowhead, no matter what your role, thank you for everything you are doing. It is absolutely legendary. Now, with that being said, we're almost a month into the game's launch and I wanted to talk to you about my thoughts on the current state of Helldivers 2. What is working and let's be honest, it really works well. What is concerning and perhaps what needs addressing and then float some ideas which I personally think could be quite interesting to see implemented further down the line. Let's go into it. From a more holistic standpoint, aside from the absolutely banging moment to moment gameplay, I think one of the main strengths this game currently has is the huge sense of community and belonging they have managed to create. You don't have to look far to see the amount of deliberate care and emphasis Arrowhead are putting into listening to us, working with us, interacting with us and generally keeping us in the loop as much as they possibly can. You can see this being echoed right back at them. The way that the community are responding to them on the internet is absolutely fantastic. Given how active the CEO has been sharing information with us that we'd usually be left waiting for months in the form of some sort of special live stream event. I'm sorry for sounding cynical folks but that really is how it feels sometimes. It is not a surprise to see and feel this direct and honest style of engagement that is being modelled at the top. Really feeling like it's the ethos of the entire Arrowhead team and it's not a surprise therefore that they are getting it mirrored back at them from the community. This is a massive lesson to any developers watching from the sideline. In terms of lessons Arrowhead are also absolutely schooling other live service games and showing everyone how it should be done. I can't tell you how disappointed we were earlier in the week when we were fighting for our lives in Space Nam to literally get booted from the game because we'd lost the planet. It was a genuine sense of disappointment and I thought it was just me and my group but this was actually the moment that really highlighted to me just how invested I am and the whole community playing this game are to this long campaign we have ahead of us. Reddit was awash with memes and condolences for those who bravely fought in the conflict. We came roaring back this weekend though folks. It was absolutely bonkers to see about I think it was 400k people fighting on Friday night to take Angel's Venture and Veld. And that leads me on nicely to this next brilliant, brilliant thing that's going on at the moment in the community. We've been introduced to the GM, Joel, who has already, in an incredibly short amount of time, gained cult status within the community. A real sense of admiration is out there for how one person has taken an integral part of a live service game that was supposed to be I here for around 10k players and somehow make it into this incredibly exciting experience for hundreds and thousands of us. And then on the side of that there's also this tongue-in-cheek fury for the dastardly methods that Joel kind of using to have these aliens and automatons pushing against us. Joel you've created a monster and I'm incredibly excited to see where this goes. I think if Arrow had continued to get this aspect of their game right this game is going to have a really fiercely loyal fan base and it already does in some ways that will continue to go from strength to strength. The future is bright the future is Joel. Speaking of bright futures if you could take a moment to subscribe to the channel i would be infinitely grateful and in return we can ensure that together we master the art of all things hell divers 2 and together get one step ahead thank you Furthermore, the progression system and the pick up and play nature of this game, I feel, have been superbly implemented thus far. They have been true to their word and that there has been no FOMO aspect to the game at all. And I've never felt obligated to play other than to simply spread democracy. I have not been concerned about hitting max level. I've been simply enjoying the ride and unlock all the stratagems, ship modules and weaponry at a leisurely pace. I've been accruing loads of the in-game currency and had the opportunity to buy plenty of armors. And whilst I did buy the steel veterans war bond with real money the opportunity to purchase this with in-game creds would have been there quite quickly for the most part i felt really well rewarded for playing the game but this is where i want to segue into some of my thoughts around areas that i think need addressing i've been left feeling pretty disappointed playing quite a lot of the weaponry to save up hundreds of medals to then unlock a weapon that feels either like a pea shooter or feel like the ammo capacity is some kind of sick joke that joel is playing on me highlights quite substantially that 
we need a balance pass swiftly to address these issues. And I know this has been mentioned that it's in the works, so I'm not saying that it's a major problem because I am confident Arrowhead will sort this. But on the topic, I've seen people asking for weapons like the infamous breaker shotgun to be nerfed, and I really don't think that that needs to happen, especially in a PvE game where power fantasy is one of the main driving forces. Instead, I think other weapons simply need buffing and bringing in line with other more high-performing weapons. At the moment, I primarily find myself using three main weapons, and you can probably guess what they are. The Breaker Shotgun, the Jar 5 Dominator, and the Scorcher. And even then, whilst I find the Scorcher does slap, it lacks ammo and does feel quite lackluster for a weapon that you do need to spend considerable amount of time getting. I know not everyone has this yet. I'm also in the Jar 5 Dominator Appreciation Group in the community, and I know that perhaps we might be in the minority there, and I do understand that a lot of people dislike the way this weapon handles, again, highlighting ammo issues as well. So the only weapon that really feels right at the moment is the Breaker, arguably. I also have a lot of time for the Incendiary Shotgun and the Incendiary Dominator, the latter actually offering a bit of knockback, which I think is really overlooked. On the matter of weapons, the CEO recently revealed some information around weapon mechanics and the myriad of stats that work in the background. And they even went as far as to give us some screenshots that showed things like recoil simulation from an earlier version of the game. And I'd actually like to have access to that as a player. However, with that being said, I do think that you need to strike a balance between overloading the player with too much information versus too little. But I would appreciate just a little bit more being available to us moving forwards. The stats are a funny one in this game because I'd like to lean into them more, but I also don't feel like they have that much of a bearing on the moment to moment gameplay. Perhaps if we get armors working correctly, so the values there are making more of an impact on the moment to moment gameplay and perhaps once we've had a balance pass with the weapons we might start to be able to delve into using those a little bit more to inform our choices i'd like to see more of it so we can build craft in a little bit more detail but that's just me folks what do you think what's also really interesting on this topic is that the ceo has actually stated that there is no data to suggest that main weapons picked have a clear positive correlation with mission success rates whilst the main weapon combinations do feel like they're leaving a fair bit to be desired a balance pass will pull this in line quite swiftly. I think it's important to also highlight what has already been doing the rounds this week regarding toxicity within the community. It's absolutely ridiculous to hear about people being kicked for not using the meta railgun shield backpack loadout. One of this game's strengths is that you can conquer missions on any difficulty in a plethora of ways. Once you've got to grips with the game, you can take the most mixed up loadouts and still make them work if you're cooperating and working as a squad. So there is absolutely no need for this and quite frankly, it's it's a ridiculous attitude a small minority of players are taking. With this in mind, I think a way to try and alleviate this nonsense would be to incorporate a vote kick system and whilst it wouldn't solve the problem completely because of the permutations that could be there in terms of who knows who in the group and whatever, I do think this would be a good step forward. For those of us that don't always have a pre-made, if you want to avoid this type of situation, I'd also really recommend to leaning into the community aspect of the game. Join Discord communities, the Helldivers main Discord, lots of YouTubers and other content creators have got communities that are building around this game and they're all using their discords mine included i'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to join the face shift community discord and there's always people on there playing games jump on folks i think once this game's popularity settles down we will see this toxicity die down but in the meantime keep being positive keep having fun play what the hell you want and spread democracy however you see fit now my main concerns at the moment address the longevity of the game the nature of live service games is always a double-edged sword. It makes for some superb co-op and community focused content but as always is the case the content can either run out or become stale. Now I'm speaking from the perspective here of someone who's been fortunate to be able to put quite a lot of hours in already definitely more than most and I've also managed to mostly dodge most of the technical and login issues that marred the early weeks of the game launch. That's been great but I can certainly feel now that I've unlocked most things and can clear eights and nines comfortably but I'm starting to want more to do in the game. Game. This week has been rife with gameplay leaks and reports of mechs and vehicles being confirmed in the game and this is certainly exciting news and will be very welcome in terms of having a new layer to the moment to moment gameplay as will the new weapons and war bonds to work through especially if they maintain what is in my opinion a very fair pricing and pacing to this progression system however alongside the main campaign we are fighting I do wonder if there is room for further content in the form of game modes, new mission types, more developed and intricate encounters and increased difficulty.
difficulty. I don't want this video to run on for too long, but I do think that, as with all live service games, the main hurdle the devs now face is how to build on this incredibly sturdy and exciting foundations to keep the game feeling fresh and give players a choice of different styles of content to clear. Discussion on the Phase Shift community Discord have taken some really interesting turns, particularly on the topic of creating raid-like encounters with mechanics and phases similar to games like Destiny. I also have concerns about the way difficulty functions in Helldivers 2, and I'm not sure again how you all feel about this, so I wondered what your thoughts were around adding further tiers of difficulty akin to Helldivers 1. It does feel, at least to me, that tier 8 and 9 feel like they reward a more passive play style, and I've heard a lot of people saying the sweet spot feels like tier 7. Here you can get your teeth right into fighting and the real essence of where Helldivers 2 shines, and I do think I'm inclined to agree. I can't help but wonder if tweaks need to be made with the way the game operates at higher difficulties, and perhaps if they were going to add further tiers to increase this and offer us more challenge, they could get even more creative with different areas of gameplay, adding more intricate mission types and encounters as a way of keeping things fresh and keeping the community engaged. With all that being said, I am seriously confident that this game is going to continue to shine as a clear example of what can still be achieved in the gaming industry when a game is made with the players put first and a sense of community is at the forefront. The future is bright. The future is absolutely Joel. If you're looking for a horde clearing powerhouse of a build to play, check out this next video. It's got you covered. Take care of yourselves, keep having fun, and I'll see you in the next one.